Hi, Dr. Kelly. Hey, good to Chris. See you. How you doing? Good to see you too. Right. Always a big time. I always have a good time yep. with you being here. Yep. Yep. So let's talk about winter landscaping ideas. It's not too early yet to talk about winter, which no, will be coming no, no, soon. No, 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 We're soon going to be there. Right. Yeah. So what are some of those uh, interesting ideas? Well, the first thing, I gave this great thought. <laughs> because <laughs> when you sent me that topic, I'm like, winter landscape? You know, it could be fall, winter. But I'm like, okay, let's just think about this. And I thought, well, the first thing you want to do before you do any you know, kind of fixing up and sprucing up mm -hmm. and doing this and that. I think, well, you need to tidy up first. Right. Tidy up. Tidy okay. up that landscape. Okay. You know, cut out all the old dead perennials and all this kind of stuff and clean up, rake up the leaves, get them off the lawn, um, clean up all the dead foliage around your perennials, yeah. you know, get, get everything cleaned up and as neat as you can get it. And then I think the next thing you could do to really make an impact with very not a whole lot of effort is to put a nice thin layer of mulch. Oh, there you go. Okay. Brand new mulch. I'm telling you, nothing brightens up a landscape <laughs> and makes it look like that you really have worked hard and know that. what you're doing. Right. When you you know uh -huh. get all that pretty I like that. Get all yeah. that pretty mulch on. But you obviously don't want to put it in the areas of your beds and things where you rely on reseeders. Okay. Right. You know, coming up. You know, you don't want to kind of uh, keep those from coming up. Okay. So, do leave though, when all you're tidying up, do leave flower heads of things like, you know, purple coneflower, some of the rubecchias and sunflowers and things that provide food, you know, for the winter birds. Okay. Because that's part of the attractiveness of a winter garden is to have the motion of the birds coming and, you know, visiting sure. your garden. So, obviously, you won't put out a bird feeder, things like that, okay. you know. Like but that. do leave those, you know, those, and ornamental grasses. Oh, don't yeah. be too quick to cut those down, even okay. though I don't think birds use those a lot. They look pretty, you know, yeah. all through the winter I, I because like they yeah. have the plumes that come up. Yeah. And we get what's called motion in the garden. Ah, you know, motion. the feathery <laughs> moving back of the plumes, you know, oh, the wind yeah. blows. It's just, you know, it's like a wind chime kind right. of thing. It's just real <laughs> quiet. But uh, rather than spending a fortune, on buying a lot okay. of the winter uh, perennials like the pansies and the ornamental cabbage and kale and some of the other things that are on sale, yeah. you know, in the fall and winter to spruce up your land. Things are so expensive. Yeah. Now, if you can afford them, yeah, buy a zillion of them sure. and spruce up everything. But if you're kind of on a budget and you're kind of uh, being careful not to, to overspend on these things, what I would do is cluster them in vocal points mm. around the landscape. In other words, you're sitting at your dining room table and you're looking out the window, what are you gonna see? Uh, you like know, it. so, and like you it. can do it in the ground, in the beds, or you can cluster big pretty containers okay. with a lot of pretty things planted in those. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be, you know, like the winter annuals. It can be, you can sow ryegrass in a container and that'd be just a big spot of pretty green. You can sow things like the, the purple mustard, mm. you know, and the lettuces that have the colored leaves and things, wow. you know, Swiss chard. Ooh, that's good. You know, you can, that. yeah, and you can eat these things. You yeah, know, right, too, right. You know, exactly you right. can yeah. cut them back and eat them, and then, you know, they'll come back and fertilize them, and they'll come back. But, you know, cluster things in groups okay. and in vocal points, like around the front door, around the entrance to the driveway, you know, the areas that you look out in the winter you know, above your kitchen, you know, window sink or whatever you look out, you know, you want to see some color and you want right. to see some movement and some interest, okay. you know. So garden art, you know, that's really low maintenance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have to go water, you don't have to spray. So get you some nice sculpture or gazing balls or statues or, you know, any any kind of thing that just fits your, you know, fancy. Right, right. You know, okay. like so are you can, if you're a good do-it-yourself or, you know, you can do some kind of crafty things with, you know, repurpose things. Right. Uh, and of course, you can do other things like, you know, <laughs> cluster your gourds and pumpkins mm -hmm. and corn stalks and the bushel baskets filled with mums or whatever, hay bales. And uh, I put ornamental grasses in that group because, you yeah. know, they're awfully like pretty. Grasses, yeah. yeah. Oh, and I meant to mention something. Uh, you can also just <laughs> take dead stuff. <laughs> and put in pots, a, a colorful pot, and you can get pretty branches or things that have a nice, pretty dead structure. <laughs> and I have a, a picture that shows that very thing. You know, how you just dead sticks in the right place can look kind of interesting, <laughs> you know. 
get that silhouette, you know, of the structure of them. <laughs> oh, and another thing you can do is, as you're thinking about all these things and as you're doing these things, take stock of your garden mm -hmm. as it is and your landscape. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna think, well, I just really don't have enough that provides color and interest you know, during the fall and winter. Mm -hmm. So maybe I need to add a few things that have winter fruit, winter That's berries, yeah. that are evergreen, have really great structure. You know, like Mahonias, Oregon oh, yeah. Grape Hollies mm -hmm. are just really pretty. Okay. And they have a nice architectural structure. So take stock and, and see if you have things already there or if you need things. And then group them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that they're of areas of interest, you know, in the winter where these kinds of plants, okay. trees, shrubs, you know, any of these things, you know, they have, uh, well, I thought I had some examples here, but I don't guess I do. <laughs> but anyway, Mahonias and crab apples, you know, their fruit last and they feed the wildlife, right. of course, okay. and uh, hollies. The hollies um, have the berries. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So there's like a lot that. of things that have, you know, pretty. Uh, okay. Like seeds that. or structures, things like that, that you can take an inventory and say, yeah, I gotta have some more of this. Mm -hmm. I think, oh, things with pretty uh, fall foliage color. Okay, okay. Or things that uh, have pretty variegation in them, and we have evergreens that are variegated. So, you know, anything that will add some splash and interest. So, do that. Uh, don't forget about, you know, planting your, your uh, flowering bulbs yeah, right. in the fall, right. so you're gonna have a pretty spring. Oh, and one thing that, b because of the pandemic, I have heard from my contractor friends that a lot of people are going to outdoor kitchens. Yes. So that uh, they can I've have a nice gathering place. Yes. And of course, you've yes. got to have a fire pit. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. a good yeah. gathering area. There's nothing more fun to me than burning up stuff <laughs> in my fire pit. You know, I really love that. And getting <laughs> gathering around, putting something on uh. the grill. You know, so if you don't have a place like that, you don't have to do an outdoor kitchen. You can just create a gathering area yeah. with chairs and a fire pit or fire I pot. I like that idea. You know, mm -hmm. and some pretty lighting. Don't forget about the lighting, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. up lighting on pretty mm -hmm. structural things, you know, your vocal points, right? you know, do some up lighting, you know, on these types of uh, vocal points or do the string lights, you know, like they do now, the party lights, yeah, you know, yeah. that Everybody's kind of doing thing. doing that now, they sure are. Yeah, so anyway, I think uh, there's a lot of things you can do to make it interesting and uh, to me having that outdoor area together, especially during the changing of the seasons, yeah. when it's not freezing cold. Right. It's just pretty and nice and, uh, you know, so. Those are some great winter landscapes. Well, thank you. Yeah, I had to so really pick, it pick my brain, you know, because I'm thinking, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Dr. Kelly. We appreciate You're welcome. that. Thank yeah. you much. You're welcome. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click the subscribe button below.